I actually have no idea what I'm going to say, but during the whole time, uh, my mind was just projecting what I'm going to say to you. Ah. Um, mm. But it's just nonsense somehow. Yes, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to you uh, two weeks ago at the dining area and I told you like after meeting you everything got worse and you mentioned that uh, at the Osho Ashram you, you said like somebody came here and got this turmoil somehow and I can somehow see like it's everything what um, the whole suffering what came up after that was basically just misunderstanding just even uh, right now, just From a psychological perspective, everyone is misled by their mind. It is useful for practical functioning, practical things, yes. But concerning identity and who you are, the psychological mind is not reliable. In fact, it is constantly whispering lies. Mm. And it is good in some sense because it compels you to find a place within yourself where there is truth. <clears throat> and the clue is that you can observe your mind. Your mind cannot observe you. You can be without this psychological mind, but it cannot exist independent of you. So you judge which is the greater, no? And stay in the place of the greater. What I want to say is, like, uh, yesterday I had this moment where I could just see, like, how uh, my mind was fooling me the whole time. Really just, um, don't, don't go to this place. It's like you're surrendering to something else, like... Um, just makes no sense for me right now, because I can see, like, this is not something what I believe, this is not something what I do, or what I can grasp is just really what I am before I believe or anything like that. So that's why, like, uh, my mind cannot really fool me anymore with this thoughts, with this, uh, and it's such a relief, like, uh, to drop this. The voice, the voice of the mind gradually becomes weaker and weaker as you discover more authentically your, yourself. It just, at some point, it will not feature anymore. You will not really hear it in that way. It will be useful for its practical functioning, but this kind of whispering and telling you what to do, and this will be redundant. It will not happen after a while. And that is so great. Because, uh, for the most part, it's a bit of a mighty nuisance, basically. Some people seem like they are difficult to accept when I say that the natural state of the mind and being is totally silence. When a thing needs to happen, <clears throat> or uh, an action to be taken, or it arises quite spontaneously, or the urge rises within you. Everything becomes spontaneous. And actually much more appropriate in its application than when you've been thinking about it and planning it. It is like someone who has rehearsed a speech to make a speech in one week. And they've got it really completely memorized, 
and even their actions or how they will express something and memorize. But on the day when they deliver that speech, it will be out of synchronicity with those who will be there to listen. The natural mind is not like that. It simply moves and responds uh, to the needs of the moment. It does not need to rehearse life. It is life. And you grow more and more into uh, your natural being, your natural state. And these perverted uh, ideas and identities, they naturally dissipate, they naturally go. But who listens, I don't know. Who follow? <clears throat> Has your mind created uh, a state of suspiciousness in you? Has it left a field of just doubtfulness or apathy or cynicism? Best to come out of that state as quickly as possible. And Muji, uh, I have experienced a lot of dysfunctional states of mind, like uh, which words can really not describe it. And when I look back, or when I uh, introspectively look, just I realize that that uh, somehow the mind was making a problem out of myself, or making a problem out of uh, my personal. My person, basically, like, uh, and fighting it, and not only myself, even fighting the other other person, like, really um, trying to. Without the person and without these these kind of scenarios, the aspiration to go beyond them will not manifest. When you begin to taste, actually, the burdensomeness of the psychological mind or the ego, then arises the aspiration to come out of them, and then you see that it is possible. You see? Don't waste, we waste a lot of time speaking about those states that in some way it kind of reinforce the sense of their reality. Your natural state is to be happy and peaceful, wise. In your natural state, you will know with the authority of experience that yourself is timeless imperishable. It will not be a belief. It will be an authentic uh, knowing, unlike anything the mind can uh, conjure up or imagine. Your natural and your pure self is not a state of belief. It is of isness. It is just so. It's not on the way to somewhere else. <clears throat> Muji, I love you. And I have to say this because I, uh, I thought like I'm following you or uh, I thought you were my master, but actually, I was ident identifying the whole time with with the with the part of my mind which was actually hiding somehow, or not seeing you really as a, as my master more than I don't know. I was just following you somehow, but not really following. <laughs> 
and it, this changed somehow last days. I don't know. It's just I didn't really love you before. I think I see it. <laughs> it feels like that, like too much judgment somehow, and judgments uh, postpones love. Selfishness hides love. Love is the natural climate of intelligent existence. Love is your vibration. It is your perfume. Okay.